In April 2022, the Russian-guided missile cruiser Moskva was destroyed by the Ukrainian military. The ship had been commissioned in 1983 and had been thoroughly modernised through the years for the equivalent cost of millions of dollars. Its loss was an embarrassment for the Russian Navy because Moskva was actually the flagship of the Black Sea Fleet. But it may surprise you to know that the ship actually sent back to the wreck to tend to it and recover lost items was built way back in 1913. The Russian salvage ship Komuna is an absolutely fascinating thing. Over 110 years old now and still in service, this makes her easily the oldest active duty Navy vessel in service in the world. Her story is as unorthodox and bizarre as the design of the ship itself. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your friend Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs, and this is the fascinating true story of the Russian Navy's bizarre 110 year old ship, the Komuna. So how exactly does a ship end up serving its country for over a hundred years? Well, it's actually a fairly rare occurrence. Most major navies warships today can be up to 30 or 40 years old, but that's around the time when faults begin to appear. The cost of maintaining a ship beyond 30 or 40 years can begin to mount as critical machinery needs more care and fatigue from decades of sailing on the ocean begins to show. Kamuna is a special case. The US Navy's oldest active duty ship by comparison is the 54 year old amphibious command ship USS Blue Ridge from 1970. Kamuna is almost 60 years older than that. How she's managed to avoid the scrapyard is an interesting tale, and it all begins back in the early 1900s. That is Russia. The Imperial Russian Navy was preparing for war back then, and famously, it wouldn't actually go so well for them. But at the time, they were investing in new and exciting technologies, and one of those was the submarine. With a fledgling submarine fleet, the Navy realised it would need to provide support to their new boats, and a dedicated tender or support vessel was needed. Now this is where Komuna comes in. Back then, the ship was called Volkov, and she was built at the Pudilov shipyard at St. Petersburg, Russia, ordered less than a month after Titanic had sunk in the North Atlantic. In 1915, the ship was officially commissioned into the Russian Navy as a submarine support vessel. Now, having such a dedicated task, Volkov had a few obvious design peculiarities. Obviously, she wasn't too good looking, although I do guess beauty is in the eye of the beholder. The ship is a twin hull vessel or a catamaran. The idea behind the weird shape of the hull was that the ship could sit comfortably over the top of the submarine and restock torpedoes or fuel from above, but that wasn't all. Volkov was also a submarine salvage ship, so if a Russian submarine was sunk, Volkov could anchor above the wreck and use a very heavy duty lifting winch and crane to pluck the wreck from the sea floor from between its two hulls. Now the Russians had seen the concept tested earlier on the German salvage ship SMS Vulcan in 1908 and they were evidently impressed. So Volkov improved on the German ship by adding a bigger and more impressive lifting rig, a type of gantry crane. In 1917 alone, the ship salvaged two Russian submarines. So that year, 1917, Volkov found itself serving against its own countrymen in the Russian Civil War, and then shortly afterwards, with the victory and ascension to power of the Soviets, she found herself under new management. The ship was renamed Komuna, the name she still carries to this day, and she undertook a lot of salvage missions. One of the most interesting of those early years involved the retrieval of the British submarine L-55, which was sunk with all hands in 1919. Years later, in 1928, she was raised by Komuna, and the remains of her crew returned to Great Britain, but incredibly, the rusted out, muddy wreck was rebuilt and put into service by the Soviets, even though it had been sitting on the sea floor for nearly a decade. The sub would go on to be tested by the Soviets, serving as the basis for a new class of Russian submarine, and it was only scrapped in the 1950s or 60s. Now clearly Komuna was of huge use to the Russians. Whenever something needed picking up from the seabed, Komuna was called out to do it. Aircraft wrecks, tugboats, it didn't matter. If it was within her weight capacity, Komuna could raise them up. In World War II, Komuna's fortune was badly tested. By all rights, the ship probably shouldn't have survived. Bombed by German aircraft, she was damaged, but continued to serve. Her most interesting mission in that war happened in March 1942. Dozens of critical vehicles for the war effort, as well as heavy machinery, had actually fallen through an ice road and sunk. 
Kamuna got to work and pulled out no fewer than four massive KV tanks and 33 other vehicles like trucks, tankers and tractors that had plunged through. In the year 1944 alone, Kamuna had recovered some 11,800 tons of shipping and repaired over 30 ships. By the end of the war, Kamuna was 32 years old and probably nearing the end of her life. Or at least you'd think so, but clearly the Soviets had other ideas. All through the 50s and 60s, and the 70s, Kamuna was doing her thing with her usual aplomb. In 1954, she'd actually gone in for a massive refit in the Netherlands, and the months long work saw the old workhorse re-engined, her ancient reciprocating steam engines being replaced with modern diesels. Incredibly, this gave the specialist ship a fresh bill of health and a new lease on life. This basically set the pattern for Kamuna for the next few decades. The whole time, the ship was running important missions for the Russian Navy, rescuing crews trapped in wrecks, recovering lost aircraft or submarines. In 1984, the ship was finally removed from Navy service to be transferred to the Russian Academy of Sciences, but during a period of inactivity, she was looted. Dodging the scrapyard yet again, the Russian government refitted her completely. The transfer was cancelled and Kamuna was back with the Navy for the turn of the millennium. So it was that by 2022, some 110 years after she was first introduced, Kamuna was out again over the wreck of the cruiser Moskva. Now, a warship that big stands no chance of being pulled up by a rescue vessel like Kamuna, but it's probable that the old ship was actually recovering important and classified documents, equipment, and even crew remains. In this way, the world was treated to the bizarre sight of the Kamuna of 1913 recovering things from the wreck of a cruiser from 1983. So why has Kamuna been able to serve for so long? Well, like many other ships that serve way beyond the normal amount of time that a ship should, it's usually down to one of three factors. It's either cost and convenience, it's either designed for a very specialist task and therefore difficult to replace, or it's just good old fashioned good luck. Specialist vessels tend to stay in service for long periods of time because they're so unique and expensive to reproduce that if they're doing a good enough job and the design is sound, then there's simply no need to retire or replace them. One good example is the deep sea diving submersible Alvin, which famously was used to explore the wreck of the Titanic. This incredible little sub will turn 60 this year and it is happily still in service. Another example is the US Iowa class of battleships now, these are decommissioned now, but they are in service from the 1940s and recommissioned briefly for a stint in the 1990s for Operation Desert Storm. World War II rendered battleships nearly useless thanks to advances in aircraft technology, but the Iowa class, with their insanely powerful guns, could serve as very capable offshore artillery platforms for bombarding enemies far inland from the sea. And so it was under these very specific operating requirements that the Iowas were recommissioned and sent to the Middle East. Interestingly, a US federal law dictated that at least two Iowa class battleships should be included in the naval register because their use as a floating artillery platform was so unique that no modern day cruiser, frigate or missile armed warship could do it as well. She was finally decommissioned in 2006, over 60 years after she had been built. In more modern times, it's been announced that the Ali Burke class of destroyers of the US Navy will actually be modernized and pressed into service possibly for another 40 years. When they are finally retired, sometime in the 2060s or 70s, they'll be around 80 years old. In the sky, the same is true of the B-52 bomber. Only 744 of these things were built just between the years 1952 and 1962, and it's thought that they will still be in service 100 years after they were first introduced. So some ships do sneak through the cracks and do a job so well that they just don't need to be retired or replaced. One day, of course, Kamuna will need to be decommissioned, and that day is probably looming soon. But so long as her steel plates stay watertight and her engines keep her chugging along, it seems that the Russian Navy isn't in too much of a rush to put this maritime super centenarian to bed just yet. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady from Oceanliner Designs. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we get new videos out weekly. If you want to support my work and get really cool perks like behind the scenes and early access, please visit my Patreon in the link in the description below or sign up as a YouTube member. Come and join the crew. And as always, stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you again next time.